How's it going, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Perfect Reload Weekly, where we take a look back at the week in video game news. And I am joined, as always, by Christian Slater. Christian, how you doing this week, man? I snorted whatever it was you left out last night, and I feel like human Mount Everest now. I benched a car this morning. That was oven cleaner. Awesome. So uh, this week is a uh, is a bit of a strange week because uh, while we did have a couple of uh, video game releases, sorry, my dog is uh, entertaining us all by squeaking his new toy. Um, we did have a couple of, of new releases, but for news wise, really light, and I think that's mostly because you know the news cycle this week was dominated by the Sony showcase. You know, it's pretty traditional uh, during a week where there's a big showcase like this uh, with seeing new game announcements. So there's not a lot of other news going on, but I you know, picked up a few things that, that happened and, uh, that we'll dive into, but that's kind of going to kind of be the uh, the case for the next few weeks is everybody's ramping up to have all their shows. We've got the Xbox show coming up. I'm sure there'll be a Nintendo Direct in there somewhere. The Summer Games Fest thing is coming up. Ubisoft has their event coming up, and there'll probably be some other stuff mixed in. I believe Devolver's doing another event uh, in the near future, but it's going to be uh, you know big news, obviously, game releases and things like that, but in terms of like ancillary stuff, it's probably going to be a little light, you know, over the next month or so, but we'll get into that in the second half of the show. But to begin, uh, I guess the first game we'll talk about this week is Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun. Oh, are you going to be one of those Warhammer nerds now with your little table and army men, and then you're screaming in a comic book shop in public because daddy never played catch with you, and now you repay him with your little liberal arts degree and $5,000 in paint on your desk and your dimly lit little closet that you call a man cave. Man, said the word Warhammer, it struck like the most personal chord possible with you. Warhammer is not something I'm like super familiar with. Like I understand what it is. I've never played it, never really interacted with it. Um, although uh, I used to be really into comic books uh, about maybe like a decade or so ago. And uh, probably like the best comic book store in the area at the time uh, did a lot of Warhammer events. They had like a whole setup that was kind of like a permanent setup that had, you know, Warhammer stuff going going on. And usually I didn't interact with it too much because I think on Wednesdays, which is new comic book day, I don't think they were doing a lot with Warhammer. Uh, but every once in a while I'd stop it on the weekend to maybe look for some back issues or stuff like that. There'd be events going on. And I legitimately, I mean, this is like the most like internet meme -y thing ever. I legitimately once saw somebody flip a table and uh, it was like super uncomfortable. Uh, I grabbed my issues and just walked myself to the other side of the store. I rang out as soon as possible and got into my car and I think I was actually like texting someone like, oh my God, you're not going to believe just what just happened. And I remember seeing people like filter out of the store and they were just like screaming at each other. And I was like, I, this is, <laughs> this is a bit too much. It's a little too rich for my blood. I think I need to get out of here. Uh, so that's about the, the extent of my interaction with Warhammer when it comes to like the, the tabletop game. Uh, but I have played a couple of the video games over the years. I think I played one of the Total War games and uh, I played Space Marine when it came out because it was very kind of Gears of War-ish. Um, and that game was was pretty solid. They actually just had a Warhammer gaming event uh, for the video game side of things, where they announced a bunch of of new games. And it looks like they are going to make a sequel to Space Marine, which is which is pretty cool. So maybe when that comes out, you know, we'll we'll, we'll check that out. But Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun is definitely a throwback of a throwback game. Uh, it is like retro to a very specific uh, niche in video game history. It is a uh, heavily inspired kind of love letter to that mid like early to mid 90s PC first person shooter. And you also saw a lot of those games kind of get like ported to like the PS1 at the time. Uh, it's very, very uh, Doom based, uh, heavily inspired by Doom, uh, down to the point where like the main mechanic for progressing the game is to acquire key cards. And, you know, you got to plug them in and open the door and move on. And like when you finish a level, it spits out like how many people did you kill? How many secret rooms did you find? Uh, you know, what was your time? Like all that stuff. It's very, um, it's very, it's not, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. 
it's not like parody. It's a very serious game. Like there's no humor or anything, but it really is. I mean, it's like, you know, the difference between like a cover band and a tribute band, right? Like it's, uh, it's, it's really going for it. And I think honestly, it like nails it. It, it hits that like really specifically in the way I kind of thought about it after I was done playing was, I'm not going to keep playing the game, not because it's bad or anything like that, but it's just not really what I'm looking for right now. But I really enjoyed it, and I kind of thought of it like an arcade game. Like, sometimes you want to play, like, a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but you don't necessarily want to spend five, ten hours playing a side-scrolling beat-em-up. You just want to play one for a little bit. So it's like going to the arcade and putting your quarter in and getting your 10 to 15 minutes worth of play out of it, and then you're kind of done. The itch has been scratched. And that's kind of the way the way I looked at it. Um, I thought the visuals were really solid. I really liked the look of the game. The shooting feels really nice. I decided to play it with a controller... Um, um, I, I, it didn't really seem necessary to play with mouse and keyboard. It's, it's not like a game where you have to be like super accurate, you know, with hitting enemies. You actually have like ridiculous range on your bolt gun. Um, I was able to like pick people off from quite a ways away. So there was no issue, uh, issue there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really well made. It's, uh, it's kind of a different thing, right? Like we don't get a lot of, uh, retro first person shooters like this when people think of like kind of like modern games that have that retro slant you know they're usually thinking of like the the 2d platformers the metroidvanias like stuff like that we don't get a ton like this um you know the retro first person shooter kind of revival has been happening over the past couple of years. There are definitely games that are doing stuff like this. Uh, and even games that are like experimenting on the formula. Um, oh, what was that? There was that weird game that came out last year where you had like the 360 degree field of view. And it was like really trippy looking. And it was a first person shooter. I wish I could remember the name off the top of my head, like devil something, I think. So there are games that are like kind of riffing on, uh, you know, the formula for it, but it's, it's cool to see like such a like well, polished presentation be put out and you know warhammer you know it's a, a decent license you know it's not gonna be you know knocking down the door when it comes to like sales charts but it's cool that they're taking willing to take a little bit of a genre risk on an established ip and also like this makes sense like this having the Warhammer license and Warhammer lore and characters and all that attached to it doesn't feel like out of place. It doesn't feel odd. Like it fits like even somebody like me that has like a cursory knowledge of Warhammer. I can see this game and be like, yeah, no, that totally makes sense to do like a Doom style first person shooter like that. That works, you know, uh, the style of enemy you're facing, the weapon, uh, you know, kind of a typical arsenal that those characters would have, like all of that, like totally makes sense. So I would certainly recommend it like i said i'm not going to keep playing it you know maybe if i get like really hard up at some point this year for something to play or maybe something clicks in my brain and i'm like hey i kind of want to go back to that you know it'll still be there you know i could always i can always pick it back up later but as of right now it's not something i'm going to keep uh keep digging into but i definitely would say that if you're looking for something a little bit different if you're looking for a different style first person shooter you know give it a shot it's it's pretty cool uh, next up on our list is Star Trek Resurgence, uh, which is the new Star Trek game that came out this week that is done in the style of a Telltale game, mainly because the game was made by former developers that worked at Telltale. You know, I could be the captain of a spaceship, no. I'm highly diplomatic, and I'm nope. an excellent candidate to be the introduction to the human race. Not at all. Not in the least, dude. I would not introduce you to anyone. Um... I so Star Trek Resurgence, I streamed it. So if you want to see me play it, the first part is up already on the channel. I, I took a look at it already and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I don't know if that necessarily came across in the stream. Uh, I was, you know, it was a little bit later at night and I was getting kind of tired, but I, I did really, really enjoy the game. And the plan right now uh, to kind of give the channel a little bit of extra content when I get some gameplay up there um, is to... Uh, do a full playthrough. I think we're going to stream the game, you know, once or twice a week and uh, kind of see where we go from there. Uh, it's all of a sudden gotten dark out, so I'm going to turn the, turn the lights on in here. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to stream it at least once a week, uh, if not more, you know, over the coming weeks and, and play through the whole thing. I think that'd be kind of fun to do. I'm, I'm 
digging the game. I like games of this style. I was a big fan of the kind of that initial run of Telltale hits. Uh, you know, The Walking Dead Season 1 I still think holds up to this day. I think that's an excellent, excellent game. Uh, Wolf Among Us was was very good. I know some people are very, very partial to the Batman game, the Telltale game. I think that game based on... Uh, it's a sci-fi show. The Expanse, is that the name of it? I think that came out. I think that might be Telltale. But it's kind of, you know, I lump these games in sort of, you know, they are different, but I lump them kind of in as well with the Life is Strange stuff and the, you know, the rest of the kind of Don't Nod and Deck Nine catalog. You know, this kind of like modern adventure game uh, in a way, you know, not necessarily point and click, but not too far off at the same time, you know. And it's a genre that I really, really enjoy, and uh, I like it so much that I can kind of push through the issues, and this game uh, definitely has some issues. So I uh, was listening to my kind of like regular roundup of gaming podcasts this week, and people brought up a lot of bugs with the game. Now, during the stream last night, aside from subtitles disappearing every so often, uh, I don't think we experienced any bugs. Uh, nothing really struck me as being out of place. Uh, I did run into some issues where my controller kept disconnecting. Uh, I actually tried two different controllers and it kept disconnected, but I don't think that has anything to do with Star Trek because it was happening uh, when I was playing Warhammer as well. So... Um, I think that's a me thing, not a game thing. Uh, but yeah, aside from subtitles disappearing, no bugs, no graphical glitches. Uh, I don't think there are any audio issues or anything like that. Nothing that I noticed. Uh, maybe along the way we'll experience them. Maybe I just didn't play enough to get to parts that are buggy, but I didn't see anything. Uh, I will say that the kind of overall look of the game is a little rough. It does look a little dated. That was kind of like the big uh, argument or big criticism of the Telltale stuff was eventually Eventually that engine was getting very long in the tooth and those games were kind of technically not really holding their own in a way, I guess you would say. Um, I think that uh, there was a point in time where Telltale needed to kind of like rebuild that engine, start fresh and get a new graphical look. So I was kind of excited when this happened. I was like, oh, you know, this is a fresh take. You know, I assume this is a different engine. I can't imagine this is the same engine as Telltale. I, don't, I think maybe for like even like legal reasons, they wouldn't have access to that really because I think Telltale used a proprietary engine. Um, but this game looks a little rough graphically. It is definitely not the best when it comes to facial animations. I think overall the character design seems fine. The the design of the ship is a little odd. The bridge of the ship, like, uh, you know, going to the bridge of the ship should be this, like, kind of, like, momentous moment in the game. Um... And you walk in there and it's just like, oh, like it's just it looks very sparse. It looks very uh, almost empty in a way like it just kind of looks odd. And I think maybe that's because like for me, like my experience with Star Trek is the next generation. And if you look at the set design on the next generation, like, yes, you had your main characters, but then you also kind of just had like other people doing stuff on the bridge that necessarily didn't have speaking roles. And when the, you get to the bridge on Star Trek Resurgence, like the whole like, left side of the bridge has like no one there. Like there's like stations, like workstations where people would be at, uh, but they're just kind of empty. There's like one dude sitting in the back, uh, kind of, you know, milling away at, at a computer of sorts. Um, and it, so it's just kind of odd. Like I, I was really surprised that it was so sparsely uh, populated. Um, you know, the, there's not a ton of, like, exploration, so you can't really say that, like, the hallways seem dead. Uh, every time that I have had to walk down a hallway to get somewhere in the ship, or and not really a hallway, a corridor in the ship, you know, there are people kind of going about their business. Uh, one thing that is very fun is if you press the sprint button, everybody starts sprinting, uh, which is kind of like, maybe, I guess, maybe that falls under a bug. Um, I don't know, I thought it was kind of humorous. Um, there was this guy, like, coming towards me as I was entering the ship for the first time, and he was, like, trying to introduce himself he's like oh hey nice to see you and he's just like sprinting past me i was like oh, okay what's up, what's up dude talk to you later i guess um so it you know with that graphical style and that maybe like dated engine feel it definitely feels 
it feels a little dated already for being a 2023 game. Uh, but like I said, you know, if you love a genre so much, you're willing to push past that stuff. And, you know, even if like you love Star Trek so much, you're willing to push past that to experience new Star Trek story. Like I like Star Trek a lot, but I really only like the next generation. So if this game was like a Voyager game or an original series game, like I don't know if I would be so inclined to play it. Like I probably would play it out of curiosity because I like the genre, but I wouldn't really care too much. So I think having like a whole new cast of characters uh, you know, there are characters from the show, like Spock is there, and he does seem, at least at the point in the game that I'm in, he does seem fairly pivotal. Um, so, you know, it, it does tie things in a little bit, but, it, you know, it's it's a loose tie, not necessarily, you know, like, oh, here's your favorite Next Generation or Voyager Deep Space Nine characters, like that kind of thing. Uh, it does take place timeline-wise after the last Next Generation movie, uh, so it has that kind of that era of like uniform and kind of look about the ship and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, if you're if you're curious about it, you know, I, I had the stream put up um, the volume. I apologize is a little low. It's unfortunately, you know, if nobody's telling me that the volume is low, I can only, you know, guess so much. So I learned my lesson last time and, you know, we'll boost the volume up for the for the next time. But subtitles are on. So if you have a little hard time understanding someone talk, you know, the subtitles are are there. Um but yeah, I'm, 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 I am really looking forward to uh, to playing more of it. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. That was the only things I played. I mean, I'm still playing, you know, MLB the show, but, you know, it's a sports game. I don't really need to bring that up every week. Uh, I've been dipping my toes back into WWE 2K23 a little bit um, just because, um, you know, I was looking for something a little bit different besides the show to play as like my podcast game. Uh, but we've got, uh, you know, some stuff coming up. The, you know, this week is Street Fighter. And so, you know, the show next week will obviously have a lot of Street Fighter talk. And on Friday night, I'm going to be streaming Street Fighter. So we'll, we'll, you know, we'll have some gameplay to go along with it. Uh, but that's going to kind of wrap up what I played this week. And we'll be back in a moment with the news. All righty, we are back, and our first story this week is that AEW Fight Forever finally has a release date. Let's get oiled up and tussle. Let's tussle. Uh, so this has been a long time coming. This game has been de in development for a while. I know a lot of people say, like, oh, it feels like this game has been in development forever. I think the reason why is because I think they just announced the game too early. Uh, they were obviously nowhere near having this game come out or even be... Uh, I don't know, probably even halfway through when they announced the game. They kept promoting it every week on television. Like, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. It's like, they really needed to stop that. They should. They probably should have not even talked about the game mostly until, like, January of this year. Um, so the game gets a release date. It's coming out by, I'm sorry, it's coming out June 29th, so it's about a month away. Um, and here is my issue. You can say what you want about the WWE games. I think personally over the past two years, they've gotten a hell of a lot better. I think 2K23 is a very, very good wrestling game. Uh, but even though they have been getting better, there's still a really big sour taste in the mouth of a lot of wrestling video game fans. And so AEW has a good opportunity here to kind of strike and put a new wrestling game out into the market and see what they can do. We've had other smaller wrestling games come along in the years, uh, but it's been a very long time since a major wrestling company that was not the WWE released a wrestling game. The last one would have been the Impact game, which was quite frankly pretty rough. So it's been a very, very, very long time since this has happened. Uh, but my issue with the AEW game is this. Uh, and let, you know, like, go back to my point. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. To say what you want about the WWE games, they know how to market those games. Uh, so WWE makes a big event out of marketing those games. They do a roster reveal. Uh, they hit their social medias all over the place. Uh, they have every major video game news outlet doing preview coverage. <clears throat> Sometimes they make those things like exclusive. Like I think one year was like IGN got the roster reveal exclusively and it was like all over the pa front page of IGN like every day for weeks like all oh, the roster reveals coming all this stuff they are constantly putting out gameplay videos preview videos developer interviews uh, it's all over Twitter it's all over their show everything we have gotten next to nothing with AEW uh, they have shown very little footage 
probably less than 45 minutes total worth of footage. It's just not enough. Uh, and they did, the day that they announced the release date, they did a live stream on Twitch. And so I tuned it, I tuned into it and I was like, oh, maybe we're gonna get a bunch of information. And what kept happening the entire time through that stream were the two wrestlers that were doing the stream saying, oh, we can't show that. We can't talk about that. And they would pull the stream down, like just have like a blank screen with just their picture and picture in there saying like, oh, you know, they were like checking notes like off to the side, like, oh, I don't know if we can mention this guy. I don't know if we can mention that. I don't think we could talk about that. You need to start talking talking about this stuff. This game is coming out in a month. We know nothing about creator wrestle. We know nothing about the story mode. We know nothing about match types. We know nothing about the entire roster. Like there is so much that we don't know about this game. Why on earth a month out from release are you saying, well, we can't talk about this. We can't talk about that. Oh, we want it to be a surprise. We want it to be a cool little thing for you to find. Nobody's going to buy your game if they don't know anything about it. You've got to start telling people about this game. You've got to start showing things about this game. If they are that worried about showing footage and talking about features and functions a month out, then this game probably shouldn't be coming out. We know nothing about this game aside from the very little that they have told us. It does appear that like influencers in the wrestling community that kind of have crossover between wrestling and video game coverage have the game. I've seen some screenshots of Twitter of like creator wrestler, uh, not like the mode itself, but like a finished creator wrestler. And uh, there were like a couple screenshots going around that showed wrestlers that haven't been announced for the game. So people have this game. So they're they're confident enough to give the game to these people. Why are they not confident enough to give it to an IGN or a Kotaku or whoever? Is it because they think that the wrestling influencers are going to be more favorable? Because if they, uh, you know, maybe talk down about the game, maybe they lose a little bit of their, uh, you know, in with the company. Is that is that happening? You know, I certainly hope not. But that's kind of what it seems like. Like, oh, let's give the game to the people that are going to say nice things about it. Let's not let anybody be critical about it. And that's just a poor move, especially because today, the day I am filming this, the day before you're seeing this, is an AEW pay-per-view. They only do four pay-per-views a year, so each one is a really big event. And there's been nothing about the game. Nothing. There was a foot, uh, a minute and 40 seconds or whatever put up on their YouTube page of heavily edited gameplay from the game. It wasn't even just a full match. And that's been a lot of what we've been seeing are like clips of gameplay, not a full match. There are full matches out there. You can go out and see them. But a lot of that footage is so old. How representative of that from a year ago is of the game that will be hitting retail in 30 days? So I think it's one of those things where, you know, there does not appear to be any type of pre-order bonus for this game. Uh, nothing you need to get in early to unlock or anything like that. So I would highly recommend, like, do not pre-order this game. There's no reason to pre-order this game. Unless you're one of those people who is in a financial situation where if you put your five bucks down, you could pay a little bit over time to pay off the game. That I understand. That makes total sense. But if you are able to afford the full price uh, price tag that they are asking for for this game, I would not pre-order because you know nothing about this game. Who would go out and buy a game that they know nothing about? And that goes for any product ever. Why would you buy a product that you know nothing about? Uh, so AEW really needs to step step things up. You know, their their gaming division has been very overblown uh, since they started it. You know, they took an existing casino style game and put their branding over it. Uh, they had that general manager game, which wasn't really a general manager game. It wasn't what people were looking for. Uh, and they just kind of like came and went. And they are so... You know, the people on the AEW side that are in charge of Fight Forever are so hyper-focused and laser-locked into we need to release release a game that plays like a late 90s wrestling game. I think they're kind of, uh, you know, missing the forest for the trees or however that saying goes. I apologize uh, if I said that one wrong. But... It's like, you know, you hear people all the time say like, oh, I loved it when wrestling games played like they did on the N64. But how many people actually want that game? There's a very vocal, very minority of people that are interested in playing a game like that. The mass public, the general public, most of which were not alive to play those games when they were new, aren't interested in playing that kind of game. You know, they, they've spent more time showing us the Mario Party style mini games than they have talking about major modes and functions in this game. It's 
I hate to be super negative. I hate to just tear things down. That's not what I want the show to be. That's not the kind of, you know, talking head that I want to be when doing something like this. But it is so just fucking confusing as to how they have marketed this game. It makes no sense whatsoever to me. I am just baffled. I am at a total loss how a company can think that they are doing the right thing when marketing and promoting this game. Uh, I hope it turns out great. You know, I'm sure I will buy it. I'm sure I will pick it up. Uh, but I don't know. I, I guess maybe I just don't have high hopes for this one. All right. So next up, this is definitely like a rumor, but it's an it's a rumor that I think could be true enough that I decided that I would bring it up, especially since it's a little light on news this week. You know, a little little light on the news. The show is probably going to be short. Uh Ubisoft, who is making a Star Wars game, because remember, Star Wars no longer has that exclusivity deal with EA. Uh, apparently, that Star Wars Ubisoft game, which is an open world style game, is going to be out somewhere between now and March 2024, which is the end of their you know end of the fiscal year. Uh, so Ubisoft has their Ubisoft Forward event coming up on June 12th, uh, which is where we could potentially see this game. Uh, either that or maybe they choose to opt to show it at, uh, they could show it at the Microsoft conference, they could show it at Summer Games Fest, whatever. Maybe they just do it at their own thing. Who knows? Uh, but they recently confirmed its release schedule for the current fiscal year. This is taken from uh, Tom Ivan's story on VGC Chronicle. Uh, their slate includes Assassin's Creed Mirage, which just got announced officially at the Sony share showcase, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, which we saw the trailer last year, I believe, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Mobile, Tom Clancy's The Division Resurgence, Skull and Bones, which keeps getting delayed, The Crew Motor Fest, X Defiant, and another large game. Uh, now, that other large game could certainly not be the Star Wars open world game. Uh, it could be something else entirely. They could... Uh, so Assassin's Creed Mirage is not like a full size Assassin's Creed game. They still have that Assassin's Creed Infinity project that they're working on. It could very well maybe that this other large game is just Assassin's Creed Infinity, their next big Assassin's Creed title. Um, I feel like, though, if that was the case, they probably would have said Assassin's Creed. I think you don't say Star Wars because you want that to be a surprise. If you say like, oh, yeah, we're probably going to be talking about Star Wars soon, it kind of lessens it a little bit, especially because Ubisoft, you know, a lot of people have kind of had a big downturn on them over the past few years. If they can make this game work, you know, it's a big hit. You know, everybody has seen what's happened with the Jedi games from Respawn. You know, it's kind of revigorated EA in a way like, you know, showing everybody that Respawn is like a serious, you know, top tier developer. Um, and I'm sure Ubisoft would love a win because, you know, right now they don't have anything that's really, you know, cranking things up for them. You know, I think Mirage could probably help, especially if it's a throwback Assassin's Creed before that kind of uh, insidious game loop looting kind of thing that the current Assassin's Creed games have where they're these 80 hour slog fests. Uh, you know, maybe that that turns things around. But, you know, it, it's interesting because another another thing kind of came out this week where uh, I think it was last year, if you remember, there were a bunch of Star Wars video game projects announced. Uh, Quantic Dream is working on one. We saw a CG trailer for that. We knew that Ubisoft one obviously is making one. We knew that Jedi Survivor was coming and that is now shipped and released. And then the other one that got announced was the Knights of the Old Republic remake, and nobody has heard anything about that in a very long time. And there were was some scuttlebutt going around this week that it was canceled. I think that was because the Jeff Grubb over at Giant Bomb said uh, that he believes the game was probably not going to come out. Now, I think uh, I didn't see the quote entirely in the video it came from, but it does seem like he was not saying that based on his status as a pretty proven industry insider. It was just his kind of gut feeling. Uh, you know, he is pretty spot on about things. So, you know, we'll we'll kind of see what what happens with that. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if it, it's been a while since we've heard about it. It's entirely possible we hear about it this year, but I think that probably out of all of those, that and the Quantic Dream ones are the ones where it's like, I don't know if those are actually going to come out. Quantic Dream has been so turbulent. Uh, you know, they are definitely due to have a game out 
you know, around this time, this is kind of like their standard dev cycle. They always took a while in between games. In their last game, Detroit, which I love, uh, you know, obviously Quantic Dream is run by some people that have done some very shady and inappropriate things in the workplace. Uh, it's very difficult to be supportive of them, but, you know, taking that out of the picture and just looking at the quality of game that comes out, I think Detroit was one of their best. Uh, it also seemed to be like the most well-received game that they have done. Uh, and I think it probably sold the well. I think it sold or sold the best. I think it sold pretty well uh, for them. So, you know, if they had any momentum happening for them as a company, it was coming off the heels of Detroit. And, you know, we saw the CG trailer for their Star Wars game, but then we have heard absolutely nothing. But that's kind of par for the course with them. You know, that's that's something to be expected. And you would think, though, with a remake of a game as beloved as Knights of the Old Republic, that maybe you would get a little bit more regular updates along the way. And that's just not something that has happened. Um, so I don't know if it'll come out or not. You know, the Ubisoft game definitely seems like that's a lock to come out at some point. And I guess if I had to really sit down and think about it, I would have said, like, yeah, 2024. I don't know if I would have said, like, before spring 2024. I would have thought maybe, like, holiday 2024. Like, maybe that makes a little bit more sense. So I definitely wouldn't be surprised if maybe this does get announced and then it's very quickly delayed. Um, you know, that would be very odd if they did that. Uh, but, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me maybe just to get the news out there and get their name out there saying, like, we are making this game and show it off in a few weeks and then in a month say, like, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, it's coming out in November. But, yeah, you know, we'll, uh, you know, hopefully learn more at uh, Ubisoft 4 in a couple weeks. And then the uh, kind of last thing for this week was, like I said, there wasn't much going on is, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that uh, PlayStation Showcase. Uh, so I did uh, my reaction to it. It went up on the channel last week. So if you're interested in that, you can you can check that out. Uh, but we'll run through it because I was not super hyped up on it. I thought it was a pretty rough show, at least in terms of what I am interested in. I thought that it was pretty lacking, and I was really surprised at that. Um, I think it just kind of goes to show that Sony just doesn't have much in the hopper for big first party exclusives. You know, like they are obviously very much into what, you know, into that mode of this is what we're focusing on are these big first person, or sorry, not first person, first party exclusives like God of War and Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us and all that. But, you know, God of War just came out last year. Santa Monica is not ready to announce anything. Uh, I don't, you know, the Days Gone people, I think that team's kind of dissolved at this point. Uh, Naughty Dog ended up coming out afterwards and said, hey, you know, we know you're looking forward to the next thing that we're doing, but we don't have anything to show for a while. So they didn't see anything there. We did get Spider-Man, obviously. Uh, Sucker Punch didn't have anything to show. They're probably still working on whatever they're doing next. So it's just one of those years where, you know, it's going to be an off year for a lot of the first party Sony stuff. They did announce first party stuff, but it was kind of more smaller in scope and seemingly live service based. Uh, which definitely does not get me excited, but I was pretty down on the presentation as a whole. So I ended up going back through after the fact and rewatching uh, the whole thing. I rewatched the whole show and some of the trailers I watched more than once, even again after that. And I, and I we're going to go through it again and, and you know, see, uh, see if my opinions have changed, because I I honestly like my initial reaction to that thing was man, I think I'd maybe try three of those games and only one of which is a day one purchase and that's Spider-Man. Um, so we started off with Fair Games, which I gotta say, and obviously I felt like a dumb idiot after this because it certainly didn't have a Ubisoft logo anywhere. But man, oh man, did that game not look like like a sequel to Watch Dogs 2? Uh, but it is uh, from Haven. Uh, this is a PlayStation exclusive. This is a first party game. It is a competitive modern heist game where you team up to break into exotic locations and steal the cargo. That could be interesting. I did really like Payday, uh, so maybe I would like this. But if this is a live service game, which is rumored to be, I don't know if I really want to get into that. I don't have the time to keep up with that stuff. Uh, we did get a trailer for Helldivers 2. I did not play Helldivers 1. Uh, I did speak to some people this week that were really excited for this because they played Helldivers the first and really enjoyed it. So maybe I'll give Helldivers 2 a shot. Uh, Immortals of Avium was up next. This is out in July, and this is one of the EA original games we talked about it a couple weeks ago when the trailer came out. It's a first-person shooter, but it's a fantastical magic missile type, you know, first-person shooter where you're shooting spells and all that stuff. Um, it's a game that I am interested in playing. 
I don't know if it's going to be like a day one purchase, uh, but by the end of the year, I would I would expect that I would have played it at some point. Uh, Ghost Runner 2 was up next. Uh, I played, I think, a demo of the first one. It wasn't anything I, I really got into. I didn't see anything here that made me think to myself, like, oh boy, I gotta play, I gotta either go back to play Ghost Runner 1 to get ready for this, or I can just jump into this. I just don't think that they're really games for me. Phantom Played Zero is up next. Uh, this is from a new studio called Cruel Man, and this game looks hard. Uh, this game looks hard as hell, and I certainly don't know that because I haven't played it, but just like looking at what you were doing in the trailer, uh, that game looked really hard. I don't know if it's gonna be like Souls-ish, um, but that combat looked very uh, difficult. Uh, it looked like there's probably a lot of depth and nuance to it, although there definitely seemed to be some sections of that, and it was hard to tell because we were seeing like HUDless gameplay, uh, but there are definitely sections of that trailer that looked like, eh, you might just be mashing on the square button during this. I don't know how much interactivity is actually here. That's perfectly fine. There, you know, there's, it's perfectly fine to have numb brain sections of a game where you're just mashing buttons while cool things are happening because, you know, sometimes you want an event to happen in your game that you kind of have to strip away player control because if you don't, then you can't really nail it the way you want to, right? So I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I, there definitely seem to be some, some sections of the where it's just like, I wonder how much you're actually doing in this. Um, next up, uh, Giant Squid Studios put out their new game. They're the people that made Abzu and The Journey, and this game looks super journey-ish. It is called Sword of the Sea. I did not play Abzu or The Pathless, which was their other game, but I loved Journey, so this kind of hearkening back to that, I think I actually will probably check this out when it comes out. This, this does look pretty good. Uh, sequel to the Talos Principle. I I believe this is a puzzle-ish game. I'm not positive. Uh, I didn't play the first one. Uh, a buddy of mine said that he is very excited for this, so I'll have to talk with him uh, to kind of get the scoop on what the Talos Principle is because I, I remember the game coming out. I remember the name, but I never played it. I don't think I ever watched any footage of it. Um, you know, a lot of sequels here to games that I just didn't play with, uh, so it's <laughs> kind of tough for me to get excited about it. Uh, Neva or Neva, not sure how you pronounce it. This game bummed the hell out of me because it was just a bunch of dead animals. Uh, so, you know, coming out next year is really cool art style, but man, I don't want to play a game where a bunch of animals are dying. Uh, Cat Quest Pirates of the Peribian, Pur which is probably the best name for a game out of all of this. Uh, that was pretty good. You know, they, they've made a few Cat Quest games before. I, I haven't played any of them. Uh, I believe one of them came out on the Switch and was pretty well regarded. Uh, but, I mean, it looked cool. You know, I don't know. Maybe I check it out. You know, if, it, if I got nothing else going on when it comes out. But, yeah, it comes out next year. The next one definitely uh, had me shaking my head. Now, I knew eventually that this would happen because every big popular game always gets a slew of games influenced by it or ripping it off or, you know, however you want to put it. And Splatoon is apparently in the crosshairs of Square Enix because they are putting out Foam Stars, uh, which is a foam party based game. Uh, it looks very much like uh, Splatoon where you're spraying your foam. Uh, and, you know, it's color-based, so you're trying to get more of your color. You can kind of ride it, like, a, on a surfboard to get around. Um, the character design, they're human beings, but the the one girl they showed in the trailer, man, if she isn't, like, super Splatoon-influenced, like, it's, like, right on the nose. Um, like, the pink hair and, like, her hair kind of split out at the ends almost. Like, it wasn't, like, pigtails, like, you know, the squid's, you know, tentacles are. But, man, she looked like one of those two squid girls that talked to you in in uh, Splatoon. Uh, so, yeah, it, I don't know. I, I don't know about this one. Let's see how well this does. Uh, the Plucky Squire uh, was up next. Uh, this was probably like visually the most interesting that, thing that came out. Uh, you play as kind of like doodles in a book, like a storybook. They can also leave and go into the real world. There were some sections that they showed that looked really, really impressive visually from like a tech standpoint and just a art design standpoint. Um, this is really, really cool looking. Uh, it is coming out this year. A lot of the games were kind of slated for 2024, but we definitely got a handful that are coming out this year. Plucky Square, I think, looking, I mean, I was very interested in it when I saw it. 
Uh, but after watching the trailer again a couple of times, it's like, yeah, I think that's going to be that's going to be right up my alley when that comes out. Uh, they're bringing Teardown to console. Um, it's not something I'm super interested in uh, because if I'm going to play this game, I want to play it on PC where there's more mods. They did say that some mods are coming to the um, console version of the game. Uh, but if I am going to sit down and play this game, as I have thought about playing it in the past, and especially now after doing a little bit of upgrades to the computer, uh, maybe I'd be more willing to to play it because I know that uh, there are times where you can like really just crush your computer to death with what is going on with particle effects and things blowing up in this game. Next up after that was Metal Gear Solid Delta and also the Metal Gear Collection Part 1. Uh, so the Collection Part 1 is the first three Metal Gear Solid games plus Metal Gear 1 and 2 coming out later this year. These games have been delisted from uh, sale for a while, uh, so they're going to be back if you want to play the original versions of those games. And then Metal Gear Solid Delta is apparently a full remake of uh, Snake Eater, which was Metal Gear Solid 3. I was never a Metal Gear Solid fan. Uh, the only one, I, I, I remember playing demo, a demo of Metal Gear Solid 1 in the mall. Uh, I, I think there was a demo disc at one point that had uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 on it, and I, I played that, but I never, never got into the series. I did play Ground Zeroes, and I played a little bit of 5. Um, I think 5 would probably have been the one that I would have gotten the most into, uh, but I was always really fascinated by by Snake Eater. Then there are a lot of really interesting co and cool concepts in that game, uh, like that boss, the end, who's an elderly man that if you just waited him out, let your system run and waited him out, he would die from old age. I always thought that was a really cool kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, Metal Gear Solid, definitely not something I have any connection to, any desire to play, but I am curious enough about this that maybe I would, would give it a shot just because, you know, I really am trying to get on that track of trying new things and getting out of my comfort zone when it comes to video games. So maybe this is a good opportunity to do that. Uh, next up was Towers of, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Agazba. Uh, it, it was like a kind of like a city builder mixed with like a exploration kind of game, third person perspective. Uh, it didn't really grab me, wasn't anything I was interested in, but might be something you're into. Uh, they showed pretty much another one of the 9,000 trailers for Final Fantasy 16 that's coming out in a month. We've talked enough about that. You know what it is. It's looking pretty good. Uh, debut trailer for Alan Wake 2 coming out just before Halloween. Uh, it looks really well made. It looks really cool. Uh, I have been dipping my toes into the horror video game uh, landscape. I don't know if I will go full in on Alan Wake 2, uh, but it did look pretty cool. Um, I watched somebody play through the first game, and this definitely looks like the gameplay is different from the first one. The first one looked very frustrating, but it, it had that kind of cool story, so it was probably something you could just kind of push through and you know understand that maybe the gameplay is not, you know, top tier but you know good enough to get you to where you needed to be to enjoy the story uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage, which we talked about. Uh, it's an interesting game. So it's a throwback to the original Assassin's Creed. It looks very much like Assassin's Creed 1. Apparently, this is reusing assets from previous Assassin's Creed games. It's not a full-length game, I guess, whatever that really means. And it's also pro it also seems like it's not a full-price game. I think I saw somewhere that it's either 40 or 50 bucks. Um, so I am curious exactly what ends up happening with this game. I am very interested in it because the Assassin's Creed games I like are the original Assassin's Creed games. Games. There's not been one that I really enjoyed since four. Um, and my favorite of the bunch is probably the first one. So, um, you know, it's been a while since I've really it's been a while since I've played one. And it's also been obviously a lot longer than that since I've really enjoyed one. So I would be interested in checking this out. Revenant Hill is the next game from the Glory Society. When I first saw it, because that art style is immediately, you know, uh, Night in the Woods. I thought it was a sequel to Night in the Woods. It is not. It is an entirely separate game. It's also apparently like communist based somehow. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, an interesting look. Um, I, you know, I enjoyed Night in the Woods. I never finished it. I've played it multiple times, but I just could never cross the finish line on it. So I'm not sure exactly why that was. Uh, but this, you know, looks neat. You know, I'm sure if you enjoy Night in the Woods, you'll probably enjoy what they do here. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Uh, I think Grand Blue Fantasy is uh, anime of some sort, maybe a manga, maybe both. Uh, this appears to be a you know, turn-based RPG. Street Fighter Six trailer. We've talked enough about Street Fighter Six. You know what that is. Ultros, which was interesting. It looked like a Metroidvania, but it was very like psychedelic. I think I made the comment uh, when I was watching the showcase that it looked like a black light poster from the 70s, like very, very like velvet poster, psychedelic kind of look. So it's cool. It's not an art style we see typically 
really a lot of, um, but didn't see necessarily enough to really get a, a nail down on what it is, like, aside from the fact that it is, like, a side-scrolling action game. I don't know if it's a roguelike, or maybe it's just, uh, you know, straight up like a, you know, a Castlevania-style game. You know, we'll see. Tower of Fantasy, it's an open-world RPG you know, not for me, but could be for you. Dragon's Dogma 2 got announced. Uh, you know, that's been a long awaited thing uh, for Dragon's Dogma fans. That game, specifically, I think it's Dark Arisen, has gotten such a huge cult following. So I know a lot of people are very excited for that. A Five Nights at Freddy's game, Help Wanted 2 got announced. Not for me. VR mode coming to Resident Evil 4. That'll be a big, big thing to have maybe help sell some VR headsets. We also got Arizona Sunshine 2. That trailer looked terrible. Uh, Crossfire Sierra Squad, a more serious style first person shooter for the VR headset. Uh, maybe that will do some things. And then Synap, another uh, first person shooter, but it is coming out this year. I don't know if this game looked good enough to get people to go and spend 600 bucks on the headset, but if you already have one, it gives you something new to play. Uh, Beat Saber coming, it actually already released. It came out the day of the showcase in a new music pack featuring uh, kind of the big hits of Queen. Uh, Bungie, so I didn't realize this when Bungie announced this game, because I wasn't really familiar with Bungie before Halo. I knew that they had made games for the Mac, but I didn't follow the Mac scene in the early 90s, so I was not familiar with Marathon. Marathon was their original game series. They did a trilogy of them. They're making a new Marathon. Um, it does seem to be an extraction shooter, uh, like Escape from Tarkov, so I don't know if it's something I really want to get into, but I will say visually it looked awesome. It didn't have any gameplay. It was all CG. Uh, but it looked, from an artistic standpoint, it looked really, really cool. So I am interested in, in checking it out. It also showed another DLC pack for Destiny 2 called The Final Shape. Concord in a really cool trailer. We don't know what the hell it is, although it is listed as a first person shooter. This is actually a first party game. I believe it's the first game from Firewalk Studios and it's coming out next year. And then before we get to the final game, they did show that Project Q, which is the DualSense controller with the screen in the middle to play your PS5 games on that screen. I do believe you need to be tethered to the PS5 locally. I don't think you can, you know, this isn't like a Switch where you can take it and connect to Wi-Fi and play your PS5 games. Uh, they also showed PlayStation 5 earbuds. But the main event, which is what I was looking forward to, you know, the, the three games I am most excited about in the world Spider-Man 2, GTA 6, Starfield. Starfield is an unproven quantity, so I can only be so excited about it. GTA 6 has not officially been announced or shown, so I can only be so excited about it. But Spider-Man 2 was something that we knew was coming. It is apparently coming this year. They initially, the rumors came out that it was coming out in September. At the end of the trailer for this, I was very surprised. No date. It just said fall 2023. I do think the game is coming out this year. I don't think it's delayed. I think, though, that maybe they've decided to move away from, from September. Starfield's in September, and I think Mortal Kombat's release date is also in September. So maybe they're going to move to October, where they have a little bit less competition out there. Right now, I think the only big October game is Alan Wake. Uh, I thought the trailer looked amazing. Although, I will say, I am heavily, heavily biased to the point where they can just give me the same graphics and engine and gameplay as the first game with a new story, and I would have been totally fine. So, I'm probably not the best person to ask about uh, this kind of thing. You know, there were some people that were definitely negative on this. A lot of people saying that they thought the graphics looked terrible. People saying that it looked like PS4 or even PS3 graphics. I don't know if I buy that. Uh, you know... I don't know. I, I think it looks good. I think that they may have given away a bit too much with the trailer. Now, I don't think it was going to be too difficult to figure out kind of what the story of this game was going to be based on the information we had. I also thought it was really interesting that a lot of people that were covering this showcase were very surprised that Venom was in the game. The trailer that we had initially for the game had Craven talking. You could hear the Russian accent, so you knew it was Craven. And then they straight up just showed Venom at the end, like his full face. Like obviously Venom was going to be in this game. So I thought that was weird. And I also thought it was a lot really weird that people were like, oh, why aren't they talking about Wolverine? They've already come out when they showed that initial trailer for Wolverine. Spider-Man comes first. Wolverine's not until like 2025 at the earliest. So I don't understand why there was like a disconnect there with people being upset that they didn't show Wolverine. They got another game coming out before Wolverine. They'll show Wolverine, but it's not anywhere near time to talk about that game yet. So I thought that was kind of kind of odd. But I am I am all in on this game. You know, I'm I am looking forward to when they announce the the release date, because if it is on a Friday, 
I'll be honest, I might just take the day off from work and play Spider-Man all day. That is, you know, I am I am ready to go for this thing. I am, whew, boy, put it in my veins. I am super, super pumped for this. When I saw you watch that trailer for the first time, I was worried that I was going to get hit by a web slinger. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to stop slinging webs. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna that's gonna wrap up the news and, and pretty much wrap up the show for this week. Uh, yeah, so a short shorter show, uh, but uh, yeah, there just wasn't that much going on this week. Uh, next week, or this this week, sorry. It's, um, this coming week, you know, obviously the big thing is going to be Street Fighter. So uh, for the channel, uh, since I've been doing some more stuff that's not just this show on the channel to give you the kind of the rundown. The show's, you know, you're watching this now. On Thursday will be a new uh, episode of Full Motion Sickness. On Friday night, we will stream Street Fighter VI. Uh, on Saturday night, we will stream the next kind of chunk of Star Trek Resurgence. And then obviously a week from uh, the day you're watching this will be another episode of this. Um, and then going from there, I, I think I'm probably on the boat now where I don't think I'm going to be picking up Diablo at launch. Maybe that changes. So most likely what's going to happen is if I don't pick up Diablo at launch, I will just stream more Star Trek Resurgence through the week uh, and and get through the story of that game and maybe even stream some some street additional Street Fighter stuff as I get further in the game and hopefully maybe a little bit competent at playing it. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap things up. Christian, anything you want to say before we head out? God, grant me the strength to get through a long weekend with this turd. Well, the long weekend's over with, buddy, and we survived. So take it easy and uh, see you see you soon. Uh, see you on Friday for uh, for Street Fighter. <laughs>